EQE is Mercedes take on what a full sized full electric premium executive saloon should be. Essentially it's a downsized EQS which means it's very futuristic indeed and sophisticated where you'll want it to be in terms of range and cabin tech. Still want that E-Class saloon? Try one of these first. Enough with electric mid-sized SUVs. What will the next generation all-electric full-sized executive saloon look like? Well, Mercedes says it should look like this. The EQE, a car that delivers a lot of the technology of the brand's EQS flagship EV limo, but at a very slightly more accessible price point. To explain the badging, EQ is Mercedes' all-electric brand name with the E at the end here, helping you place the car within the company's model lineup. Think of this as an electric E-Class, just as the larger EQS is effectively an electric S-Class. In fact, the EQE shares much with that electric flagship Mercedes, including its EVA2 premium class electric architecture platform. As we filmed this saloon EQE model in the spring of 2023, it almost had the segment for large EV executive saloons to itself. Apart from token class resistance from Korean luxury brand Genesis with its G80 electrified model. Mercedes is well aware though that this state of affairs won't last for long. The two cars this EQE sedan is really aimed at, the BMW i5 and the Audi A6 e-tron being readied for launch as we finalise this review. EQE saloon customers will want to consider these two rivals, provided of course that it's a saloon they really want in this segment. Mercedes also repackages the same engineering in the form of a separate EQE SUV model, which is likely to be the more popular of the two body shapes by a considerable margin. Either way, the EQE model line represents another sizeable step forward in Mercedes' plan to sell more than half its cars with some sort of plug-in powertrain by 2030. Perhaps even before then, we might see the EQE replace the E-Class or simply absorb the name. But until that time, this futuristic EV saloon offers an intriguing alternative to the more conventional four-door, mild hybrid or PHEV E-Class you might otherwise have chosen. Right here, right now though, is it a better alternative? Well, to find out, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. You want a futuristic driving experience if you're to choose a six-figure luxury EV. And of course, this EQE provides it. The door handles spring out as you approach, and a background orchestral sound, a bit like the London Philharmonic warming up, greets you as you get in. Once inside, you're faced with a huge EQ-branded centre monitor and a three-pointed star on the display ahead of you. Press the big starter button, and that instrument screen switches quickly to a pair of virtual dials with blue needles that click into place with an electrified quiver. You're ready, but for what? Large executive saloons are often driven long distances, so they need big batteries. Not quite as big in this case as the vast 107.8 kilowatt hour pack that Mercedes fits to this EQE's larger EQS stablemate, but 89 kilowatt hours is plenty large enough to make sure that this EQE doesn't fall at the first crucial hurdle, that of driving range. In this case, it's up to 388 miles with the base model, or 349 in the high-spec variant we're trying here. Interestingly, those same figures apply whichever of the two mainstream power outputs you select, either the 245 horsepower EQE 300 model or the 292 horsepower EQE 350 derivative that we're testing today. Which means, of course, that those who have the funds are almost certainly going to pick the more powerful version. Unlike the rival Genesis G80 electrified model, which is all-wheel driven, both these mainstream EQEs drive only from the rear wheels. If you want an all-wheel drive EQE that isn't an SUV, 
you'll have to find the considerable extra amount the brand wants for the flagship Mercedes AMG EQE 53 Formatic Plus variant, an EV super saloon with a storming 625 horsepower and 950 newton meters on tap that bludgeons its way to 62 miles an hour in just three and a half seconds. The power gap this leaves in the range, back to the two more accessible versions, is filled on the continent by a couple more versions, the EQE 500 4MATIC with 402 horsepower and the Mercedes AMG EQE 43 4MATIC Plus with 469 horsepower. But the brand currently seems to have no intention of importing these two for our market. Arguably, they're not needed because at the wheel of this EQE 350, you're unlikely to be left wanting for performance. It dispatches the 0-62 mile an hour sprint in 6.4 seconds, just under a second faster than the base EQE 300. And progress feels satisfyingly swift without being almost ludicrously fast as some EVs can be. This one attempts to emphasize its acceleration with a selectable pair of so-called sound experiences that play through the Burmester sound system, if you have it, the soundtrack rising and falling with throttle use. Vivid Flux gives your EQE the feel of a spacecraft approaching warp speed. Silver Waves is equally odd. Mercedes says it's a clean and sensuous sound, but it's actually more the sort of thing you might hear during a massage at a spa. If, like us, it all makes you rather despair at the future of EV technology, you might be slightly more comfortable with the so-called soundscapes you get with the AMG 53 model, which are a fraction closer to combustion reality. Proof that the engineers behind this car haven't wasted all their time with this sort of nonsense comes in two forms. First, with the clever energy recuperation system, which is manually selectable via the steering wheel paddles in three stages, D+, plus, D and D-. minus. The last of these allowing for maximum brake energy recuperation. Though even here, you'll still need to use the brake pedal. Most of the time, though, you'll be content to leave the car in its other regeneration mode, D Auto, in which setting it'll make its own recuperation decisions on the basis of camera, sensor, radar, and GPS data. The instrument binnacle's right hand power meter shows you, with rather distracting, rapidly illuminating graphics, whether you're using or regenerating energy. The other piece of engineering that's really impressed us here is the exquisite quality of ride from the Airmatic Plus suspension, which is borrowed from the EQS, but unfortunately only comes fitted to the two top trim levels. It's an air chamber, four link front suspension setup with a multi-link rear arrangement and parameters adjusted depending on the dynamic select drive mode system that all EQEs feature. Choose from eco, comfort, sport and individual. With Airmatic Plus fitted, the ride height falls at above 74 miles an hour, which improves aerodynamic efficiency and ups the driving range. Predictive camera-based suspension tech is missing here, but this car nonetheless wafts confidently over speed bumps and tarmac tears, though not quite perhaps as seamlessly as does its EQS stablemate. Without Airmatic Plus, lesser EQEs inevitably communicate more of this EV sedan's prodigious 2.3-tonne curb weight over poorer surfaces. You might expect that enormous curb weight to tell at speed through the bends as well, and to some extent it does, though predictably less than would be the case with the higher riding SUV version of this model. The low body profile and even lower center of gravity help the EQE here, to the point where you might even find it involving, were it not for the light steering feedback that Mercedes thinks executives want. But that's not what mainstream variants like this one are engineered for. Choose a Porsche Taycan or an Audi e-tron GT Quattro if you're after that in this segment, or find the considerable amount extra Mercedes wants for the AMG 53 4MATIC Plus flagship model we mentioned earlier. 
That top version, by the way, gets rear wheel steering for extra bite, a setup that also features with the two top trim levels further down the range. In fact, we're trying it here. This can turn the rear wheels in the same direction as the front by up to 4.5 degrees, which improves agility or stability depending on where it's needed. You'll particularly get the benefit on fast corner turn-ins or at high speeds when changing lanes on the motorway. As usual, with this kind of setup, the system also works in reverse at very low speeds when the rear wheels turn the opposite direction to the fronts in order to reduce the turning circle. A very useful feature on a car measuring almost five meters in length. On the highway, you'd expect an EV Mercedes in this class to be almost silent. And provided you're prepared to turn off those potentially irritating soundscapes we mentioned earlier, this one shouldn't disappoint. Wind and tyre roar are kept to the absolute minimum, helped of course by the slippery aerodynamics. Crucially, the EQE feels like a large executive Mercedes saloon should. Comfortable, refined, capable, but primarily in its comfort zone when wafting along. Switching to an E-Class after this, you'd still be impressed, but it would seem like a small backward step in time had been taken. Such is the draw of the EQ brand. The EQE styling is clearly intended to amplify its electric underpinnings. You might initially mistake it for the brand's larger EQS saloon, and like that model, this one can also be had with a separate SUV body style, which the brand expects the majority of customers to want. Unlike the EQS, which is actually a five-door hatch, this really is a saloon though you might expect it not to be because there's little of the three box profile that would characterize an equivalent four-door E-Class. Instead, with this distinctive swept-back silhouette, the aerodynamicists have tried to smooth everything off with the merest hint of a kick at the end where the boot is. It's really more like the brand CLS four-door coupe, which is also the closest model to the EQE in exterior proportions. Here, though, the end result is much sleeker. The one-bow profile delivering a range-maximizing drag factor that can be as low as just 0.22 CD. A lot of this, of course, is also down to intricate detail design. These flush-fitting door handles, for instance. Even the wheels, which vary in size between 19 and 21 inches, depending on trim, have been aerodynamically optimized. We've got 21 inch AMG multi-spoke alloys fitted here. If the side profile is subtle, the front end is far more eye-catching. Or at least it is here, this upper spec model featuring a specially patterned grill plate full of tiny brand icons that look like little tiny wind farm sails. The AMG 53 version gets a grill plate with that sporting division's familiar vertical silver slats. Whatever its finish, this panel hides the multiple sensors and cameras to help the various adaptive driver assist systems function. Like, for instance, the clever digital light technology fitted here that can be added into these LED headlamps lower cutouts at each corner. Each have these twin black veins, and as on the EQS, the switch to seamless panel design is evidenced by this unusual overlapping bonnet, which does away with the traditional separation between bonnet and wings. That bonnet, by the way, can only be opened by a specialist workshop for maintenance, such as replacing the interior air filter. If you're wondering how you top up the wiper fluid, well, that's via a service flap integrated into the left front wing. The rear, like the front, has what seems like an almost impossibly raked screen, the bottom part of which houses a high set brake light, which isn't actually very high set. There's the usual EQ brand full width LED light bar, and these bumper corner slits presumably have some aerodynamic function and there are twin chrome strips below each corner reflector. As usual, of course, what's more important is what you can't see. The first bespoke EV chassis Mercedes has ever designed, the rigid aluminium EVA2 electric vehicle architecture platform borrowed from the EQS that undergirds this car. 
There's lots then to the exterior design, but the futuristic sense of style chosen here is undeniably divisive. Mercedes can afford for it to be, because eco-minded boardroom buyers always have the alternative of a more traditional looking E-Class E400E plug-in hybrid model. That unfettered approach extends to an even greater extent inside. Let's take a look. As you approach the driver's door, the flush fitting handle springs out as you unlock the car. Unfortunately, when you grasp it, the whole thing flexes cheaply and the rather limp sound of plastic uncatching plastic isn't quite the welcoming handshake you might have been hoping for from an 80 to 90,000 pound EV saloon from the large part of the executive segment. In other markets where this Mercedes is sold, you'd notice this much less if your EQE had been fitted with the automatic comfort door system. That, at the time of this test, the brand wasn't offering here. With this, when you're within one and a half meters of the car, it provides a chauffeur service and opens the door for you. Mercedes still has an enviable reputation for luxurious cabins, and it's something the EQE simply has to get right to be credibly considered in this segment. We had our reservations about the interiors of both the EQS and the current seventh generation S-Class, but somehow this works rather better, a cabin that manages to blend classic ideas with modern detailing. There's plenty of screen tech, of course, and the high set center console and slab effect dash seem appropriately futuristic. The latter, topped by a narrow vent line highlighted by copper colored detailing, meant to evoke an electrical theme. This, together with the thin accompanying ambient lighting strip, flows seamlessly back into the door cards, the joining point in each corner, just shy of a silver jet turbine style air vent. You get this Art Deco three-spoke flat bottom steering wheel and on top models, finishing touches like this red dash top double stitching and intricate Burmester speaker grills. You might even like this enormous slab of piano black plastic below the center screen. And there are lovely extra touches like this little hidden speaker by the front quarter light. At night, with the elegantly backlit 64 color ambient lighting system illuminated, it all feels very high end indeed. It all feels beautifully built too, with high quality materials adding to the feeling of quality. Of course, taste is personal. This line structure, lime wood fascia trimming may to you look and feel like rare ash veneer, or conversely, as it does to us, look rather too reminiscent of corrugated cardboard. But at least it's an adventurous piece of design, both part of a look that's both futuristic and familiar. Having said all that, if you come to this car with any sort of familiarity with the larger EQS, you might well, like us, be left with the feeling that the whole front of cabin experience has primarily been designed around something that most EQE owners can't have. Namely, that larger model's enormous 55.5 inch wide hyperscreen fascia triple monitor setup, the vast potential perimeter of which is outlined by the edges of this slab sided dash. Unlike in other markets, UK customers can only have the hyperscreen on the top AMG 53 version of this car, and then only as a pricey option. Instead, your EQE will almost certainly come with this separated twin screen combination, which looks rather strange in an era where, particularly in Mercedes models, the central infotainment monitor is usually bonded to the instrument cluster display. That instrument cluster here is a 12.3 inch arrangement, much as you'd find in an S-Class, but for some reason lacking that model's occasionally slightly nausea inducing 3D display option. You select what you see through the wheel by using this fiddly touch sensitive button on the upper of the two provided bars on the right hand spoke. There are three selectable instrument layouts, this twin dialed classic setup, red tinged sport and the minimalist understated screen. Within these, you can prioritize readouts for navigation, drive assistance and servicing. Stay with the twin dials and you'll view a speedometer on the left with a bottom battery meter, while on the right is a power meter with a bottom section showing your energy harvesting rate of intelligent recuperation. Between these two virtual gauges lies a center section for selectable info. Choose between an odometer, trip computer data, an eco display, range and consumption readouts, an attention assist screen, your audio selection or charging info. 
Finally, once you're familiar with all that, you'll further find that swiping up on the bar button allows you to access the various provided layouts for the head-up display, if that feature has been fitted, these being minimal, sport, standard or eco display. Just about anything else you might need to know will, of course, be covered off by this central OLED monitor, which in theory is 12.8 inches in size, though in practice the screen real estate's much less than that because a large part of the bottom sections covered off by permanently displaying ventilation functions. These include a very detailed climate menu via which you can access the car's Energizing Air Control Plus air purifying system which reduces the ultra-fine particles of sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide and odours that might otherwise infect the cabin air. Your selectable centre screen options start with the EQE's wide-ranging EQ menu. Then if you swipe left, you can then scroll across shortcuts that'll take you to the car's navigation, radio, phone, comfort, settings, media, apps, store, info and smartphone sections. We'll cover the EQ menu in more detail in our cost section. Comfort, as you'd expect, deals with all the seat features, plus the ambient lighting, which can illuminate to designate certain safety features. Elsewhere on the home screen, phone gives you wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring, in which guise the monitor layout's especially smart, while apps connect you to an internet browser and info to an energy flow meter which shows you at any given moment what's being powered by what. This main part of this MBUX media display monitor can work by jabbing at the screen or by fiddling with another one of these tiny little steering wheel touch sensitive buttons. This one on the left hand steering wheel spoke. Neither is exactly user friendly whilst on the move, so it's best to instead try and master the intricacies of the MBUX voice assistant setup, which recognises 27 languages and can answer questions as well as deliver vehicle functions. It can't change drive modes though. The various dynamic select settings are accessed to the left of this slim panel at the bottom of the centre monitor which also incorporates shortcuts to the parking camera system, EQ functions and audio volume. Here too is the touchpad for the car's fingerprint recognition system. Mercedes has for some reason decided to make the seats these one-piece sports-style chairs, which are of course heated and on most models come upholstered with a smart Artigo man-made leather and micro-cut microfiber combination we have here. They turn out to be multi-adjustable and supportive over long trips, but sit you quite low. If that's not your preference, then of course you'll be pointed towards the alternative EQE SUV model. Here though, there's more of a forward visibility issue with these large and rakish A-pillars, particularly at roundabouts. And the swoopy roof line means that there's some rear visibility issues out of the narrow rear screen. Though these are mitigated to some extent by all round sensors, a rear view camera, and if you avoid base trim, a blind spot monitoring system. As in the EQS and the S-Class, not everything feels of the highest quality. And there are a few plastic bits of trim that ought to feel more metallically solid, like those silver outer vents. At least there's plenty of cabin storage space. This shiny panel on the upper part of the centre console opens to reveal a cubby, a wireless charging mat, twin USB-C ports and adjustable twin cup holders. Beneath this compartment is a further shallow floor level storage area, which has two further USB-C ports and an elasticated strap to prevent items sliding into the footwells. There's a big glove box and you get decently sized door bins and a twin lidded compartment between the seats with yet more illuminated USB-C ports. Mercedes has omitted an overhead sunglasses compartment, but there are the usual ticket clips in the sun visors. Right, time to take a look in the rear. Now, the EQE has a wheelbase 90 millimeters shorter than that of its EQS stablemate. How noticeable will that be inside? Well, let's take a look. As at the front, the door is frameless.
and it admits you into a rear seat area that has both pluses and minuses. The legroom issue really isn't much of an issue. The bespoke EVA2 platform sees to that and there's plenty of room to stretch out. And because there's a flat floor, a middle seated adult could potentially be accommodated. But the bench is sited quite low in relation to the floor, so you'll find your knees bent at a slightly awkward angle. And as we'd feared, that swooping rear roof line will restrict headroom for taller folk, particularly with this mandatory twin panel panoramic glass roof fitted. Overall, if rear seat space is important to you, you do better to look at the alternative EQE SUV model. As usual with an EV, this bench can't do anything clever like slide or recline, and it doesn't provide quite as much long journeying under thigh support as we'd like either. The rear quarter light windows aren't as big as they look from the outside, and that, together with the rear privacy glass, would make this rear seat feel rather dark and claustrophobic were it not for the glass roof, which is probably why Mercedes had to standardise it. If you've avoided base trim, you get this large centre screen for control of the rear part of the full zone climate system, part of what makes it feel very luxurious back here along with the ambient lighting strips on the red stitched door carts and the under front seat illumination. There's the usual center armrest with cup holders, plus decent door bins, overhead reading lights, a coat hook on each B pillar and twin center vents. We'll finish as usual at the boot, which is where all your luggage has to go because there's no underbonnet front space like you'd find in a Porsche Taycan or an Audi e-tron GT Quattro. Once the powered lid opens, a 430 litre space is revealed. That's 76 litres more than you get in a rival Genesis G80 electrified. But if that's still not enough, then that alternative EQE SUV body style we've been mentioning can offer you 520 litres. The larger EQS, by the way, is up at 610 litres. But as we said earlier, that is a hack. The cargo area is deep and there's also quite a deep underfloor compartment for charging lead stowage as well. The steel painted ceiling part to this boot doesn't look very premium though. Being an EV doesn't seem to entitle you to a 12 volt socket back here and as is depressingly usual with electric vehicles there's no provision for storage of any sort of spare wheel but there's a netted compartment to the left and a warning triangle comes fitted into the inside of the boot lid. If you can't resist the thought of a trip to Ikea, you'll be pleased to see that the rear seat backs recline, though because no cargo sidewall or ceiling catches are provided to release them, you'll have to go round to the passenger compartment to flatten things. Once you do that, you'll find that the backrest folds flexibly 40, 20, 40. So long items like skis can be slid in between a couple of rear seated passengers. At the time of this test in spring 2023, getting behind the wheel of an EQE saloon required a minimum outlay of around £74,000 for the entry-level model. That's the EQE 300 version with base AMG line trim, a variant which puts 245 horsepower to the rear wheels. £3,000 more gets you the more powerful EQE 350 variant we're trying here, also rear-driven, but with 292 horsepower. Either way, you'll probably want something a bit nicer than base trim, either mid-range AMG line premium spec or the top two identically priced mainstream options, AMG line premium plus, which is what we have here, or the more classically finished exclusive luxury version. These two packages priced at around £86,000 as we filmed. In case you're not aware, this is one of two available EQE body styles. The other, likely to be far more popular, is the EQE SUV. Though direct comparisons here are difficult because unlike this saloon, the EQE SUV can be had in mainstream form with formatic all-wheel drive. That's the base EQE SUV 350 formatic model, which as we filmed was priced from around £90,000 in base AMG line trim. 
The other available EQE SUV variant available at the time of filming was the EQE SUV 500 4Matic, which from launch cost from around £109,000 and uses a 402 horsepower motor only offered with this saloon body style in other markets. That's one of several powertrains UK EQE saloon customers weren't offered from launch. The two others are the EQE 350 Plus, basically the same as the EQE 350, but with a fractionally larger 90.5 kilowatt hour battery, and the Mercedes AMG EQE 43 4Matic Plus with 469 horsepower. That AMG 43 model's emission is a pity because it would be a useful stepping stone to the flagship variant in the current EQE saloon range, the Mercedes AMG EQE 53 4Matic Plus. As you'll know, if you've already viewed our driving section with that derivative, power goes to all four wheels, and there's a lot of it. 625 horsepower sourced from that slightly larger 90.5 kilowatt hour version of the drive battery we just mentioned. The 53 comes with two contrasting trim levels, sporty night edition or luxury orientated touring, both priced identically at almost £115,000. Those AMG 53 models, though, are almost a separate proposition altogether, and it's the conventional EQE saloon that gets our attention here. Produced at Mercedes Bremen plant, rather than the Sindelfingen factory that builds the EQS and S-Class, it runs along the same production lines as the C-Class and two other Mercedes models that conceivably might also be on a potential EQE customer's radar the all-electric EQC SUV, and perhaps most significantly, the more conventional E-Class. Interestingly, the EQC's price starting point is almost exactly the same as that of this EQE, around £75,000, though the EQC does have a more potent 408 horsepower, 400 designated powertrain, and it gets the standard 4Matic all-wheel drive system that mainstream EQE saloons can't have. It's a slightly smaller car, though. At the time of filming, we didn't have prices for the new 6th generation E-Class, but we expect that the most comparable version of it, the E400E plug-in petrol hybrid with around 70 miles of EV range, will cost you around £70,000, so around £5,000 less than the base version of this EQE. It would be an interesting option for a Mercedes loyalist to consider. But of course, quite a few customers in this growing segment for large EV executive saloons won't be Mercedes loyalists. And for them, the two most obvious options here will come in the form of BMW's i5 and the Audi A6 e-tron. Both were in the final stages of being readied for launch as we made this film in spring 2023, but it's safe to assume they'll be priced at or around the level of this EQE. A direct competitor we could reference at the time of this test was the Genesis G80 Electrified, though it's not quite direct because it comes only with all-wheel drive, has quite a bit more power at 370 horsepower and a significantly lower price, around £70,000. Worth a look though. You might also want to look at the rear-driven Porsche Taycan, which costs about the same as an entry-level EQE, or that Porsche's clone, the Audi e-tron GT, though the Audi only comes in all-wheel drive form, so costs from around £85,000. But both the Taycan and the e-tron are more sportily orientated, more cramped in the back, and offer much lower EV driving ranges, so we don't really count them as direct competitors here. Nor really is the latest version of Tesla's Model S, which wasn't yet available in the UK as we filmed, but which we expect to command a price in the £100,000 ballpark. Otherwise, unless you're prepared to look down a class at offerings like more powerful versions of cars like the Tesla Model 3 and the BMW i4, there aren't too many other choices you could make here, assuming you want an EV and not a plug-in hybrid. If, having considered all of these options, you decide that it is an EQE saloon that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Mercedes has been with standard spec. So, let's take a look at that now. Beginning with base AMG line trim, which, as the name suggests, gets AMG-inspired styling outside and in. It's also fitted with aerodynamically optimised 19-inch alloy wheels, a panoramic sliding sunroof, 
Privacy glass, heated windscreen washers, LED headlights, a powered boot lid, and a reversing camera with parking sensors. There's a mirror package included that features electric folding wing mirrors, surround lighting from both mirrors, and brand logo puddle lights. Dynamic Select is fitted to all EQE models, which gives the driver three different modes to choose from. Eco, Comfort and Sport settings, plus an individual program. And there are four brake energy recuperation levels ranging from D plus, D and D minus. That's no recuperation, normal and strong recuperation respectively. The fourth is Mercedes auto setting, which is the default and will predict braking strength required depending on speed, terrain and other traffic. Inside, the EQE gets a pair of large screens as standard on all trim levels, a 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster display and a 12.8-inch centre dash infotainment media display. That big middle monitor includes a fingerprint scanner that can be used to start the car and save settings to pre-program elements such as the seating position or radio station to the driver's profile. Two fingerprints can be saved, plus there's also a pin input that can start the car. The central screen includes EQ navigation services, an EV focus sat nav setup that can factor in charging stops and provides an economical route where required. This has live information for three years included in the cost of the car. Wireless smartphone integration is of course also included should you prefer a different navigation or media setup with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring available. And there are six USB-C charging ports in the cabin, four of which can allow for data transfer. A conventional Mercedes sound system is fitted as standard until higher trim levels and most mainstream models come with anthracite line structure lime wood trim black cloth roof lining and upholstery in a combination of man-made Artico leather and micro-cut microfiber cloth. Of course, this is a large executive car, so a selection of premium features are included, even from base trim. An air quality package includes an HEPA air filter and automatic switching between fresh and recirculating air, depending on outside conditions. Ambient lighting provides three dimming zones, up to 64 different colours and 10 colour moods to pick between. While AMG branded kit includes stainless steel pedals, AMG floor mats, front sport seats which are heated and an AMG multifunction sports steering wheel trimmed in Nappa leather. The entry-level EQE spec also includes a remotely interactive app, of course. There's always one of those with an EV. This one's called Mercedes Me Connect and will let you check the status of your EQE, where you've parked it and how much charge or range there is remaining. Plus, you'll be able to pre-program the climate control, activate remote locking and unlocking and access real-time traffic information with navigation directions able to be sent from the app to the car, all of this directly from your smartphone. Included for three years is a geofencing system that will denote a specific area and send a notification to the app when the vehicle leaves or enters that space. And there are vehicle tracking and valet protect functions that keep drivers in the know as to the location of their EQE, even when they're not in it. When used alongside the Guard 360 Vehicle Protection Plus package available from AMG Line Premium Plus trim upwards, the Mercedes Me Connect app can also help find a stolen vehicle and it can take surround car snapshots of any theft or damage caused when you've left your car parked. It can even remotely immobilize a key. So add all the core functions of that app to the AMG line features we've already briefed you on and you'll realise that as base model specifications go, the package provided here is pretty non-basic. Yet yeah, even so, most buyers will look to stretch at least to mid-level AMG line premium specification, which costs £5,000 more 
than the entry level trim. For that extra cash, buyers get larger 20 inch alloy wheels, which also feature aero elements to maximize range. Exterior changes are slight, but inside the upgrade includes a memory package for the electric front seats, four zone climate control and keyless go, where all doors can be unlocked just by touching the door handle. Should the ambient lighting setup in the AMG line model not be sophisticated enough for you, Ambient Lighting Plus is included here. It still offers 64 different colours to choose from, but adds contour lighting to the interior and dynamic modes where colours alternate slowly or change to the driving mode. Shifting to the plusher AMG line premium plus specification tested here sees a big jump in equipment. It costs an additional £7,000 over AMG line premium, but includes 21 inch alloy wheels and a parking package with 360 degree cameras. It's also the first point in the range from which a really important feature is fitted, Airmatic air suspension, which allows the driver to change suspension settings as part of the driving modes. The almost equally desirable digital light headlight package is included too, which offers more powerful LED lighting, which illuminates not just the road ahead, but other road furniture and users. Things like pedestrians, traffic lights, road signs and roadworks. Using GPS data, the digital light system also adjusts the beam, such as when going over a crest, dipping the headlights so they don't just shine into thin air. Another key AMG line premium plus spec feature is rear wheel steering, where wheels on the rear axle are able to turn by up to 4.5 degrees, together at high speeds for cornering stability or in opposite directions at lower ones for a tighter turning circle. AMG line premium plus models also get an acoustic comfort package, which reduces exterior noise in the cabin. And at this level in the range, you can expect to find a heated windscreen an upgraded Burmester surround sound audio system and a head-up display with augmented reality navigation. Rounding out the mainstream EQE trim levels is exclusive luxury, which as you'll notice doesn't include AMG in its title. That designates a different emphasis on style and equipment with less focus on the sports design that comes with AMG inspired trims, instead going for a classic Mercedes look and feel. It comes with electric art exterior styling, which gives the car a chrome front chin, as well as chrome trim along the side skirts and the rear bumper. Comfort spec seats are fitted inside with climatized front chairs, heated or cooled, along with heated rear seats and a heated steering wheel. The dashboard is trimmed in ship's deck, open pore walnut, and the upholstery is full Nappa leather in a quilted combination of black and space grey. It's all reminiscent of older Mercedes-Benz models, just brought right up to date. Also offering a choice between an overtly sporty and a more classical luxury look is the top Mercedes AMG 53 Formatic Plus flagship model we mentioned earlier. If it's visual sportiness you want, you'll need the night edition version, which comes with aggressive front and rear bumpers, an AMG boot lid spoiler and red brake calipers peeping out from the spokes of the unique Y spoke 21 inch AMG wheels. The Touring 53 variant is more subtly finished and has a less overt 21 inch wheel design. The two 53 derivatives are slightly different inside too. The Night Edition gets dark anthracite line structure, lime wood trim on the dashboard, while the Touring features ship's deck open pour walnut wood trim. Otherwise, the spec on both versions is pretty much the same as you get at the top of the mainstream range. So expect to find features like airmatic suspension, the digital light headlamp system and rear wheel steering, the Bermesta stereo system, the head up display, climatized seats, a heated steering wheel and a heated windscreen. One reason you might prefer the Night Edition 53 model is that only with that can you specify the brand's optional AMG performance package. £8,000 more 
and designed to make the EQE 53 4Matic Plus even sportier to drive. Included with this are yellow AMG brake calipers with a ceramic composite braking system, an increase in the top speed to 155 miles an hour, and an AMG Dynamic Plus pack that includes race start launch control feature that gives you a brief Grand Prix style boost in torque and power when pulling away. The AMG Performance Package also includes an AMG Track Pace app that monitors lap times and gives driver coaching, and what Mercedes calls an AMG Sound Experience feature with three extra drive motion synthesized sounds, balanced, sport, and powerful. While we're talking about options, we've got to brief you here on a pretty crucial one. At the time of our test, it was only with the top AMG 53 models that Mercedes was prepared to offer their much talked about 55.5 inch hyperscreen triple monitor dash setup borrowed from the larger EQS. This sees a single piece of glass stretch across the cabin, incorporating a huge 17.7 inch central display, as well as a separate passenger controlled 12.3 inch passenger display and a 12.3 inch instrument screen. Even if you stretch to an AMG 53 variant, you'll have to pay a cool £7,000 more to get its cabin hyperscreen equipped. Mercedes is hinting that availability of this feature might be extended down into the mainstream range later in the EQE's production run. In the mainstream EQE range, individual options are restricted to a tailored baby seat or a cool box that can be bought from a dealer, that's it. Otherwise, it's simply a choice of which paint box to tick. You won't need to pay any more if you're happy with one of the core metallic shades, obsidian black, graphite gray, high-tech silver, or as here, soda light blue. If you're happy to pay more for paint, another 700 pounds gets you a metallic white or solid Patagonia red or Alpine gray. Lottery winning folk can tick the £2,000 box for the top matte graphite grey Magna finish. It's worth remembering that Mercedes will regularly upgrade the EQE via over-the-air updates, as users do with their smartphones. This will improve or add certain functions, potentially even unlocking additional range or performance from hardware in time. Available through the Mercedes Me store is the individualization package, which downloads an extra roaring pulse drive motion sound experience, plus different unlocking and locking light displays and mini games for the infotainment system, such as Sudoku. Over the air updates can also add alternative driving modes, such as the useful beginner drive mode for those that are just getting used to the performance of an electric car making the driving characteristics more gentle. There's also a valet mode available, which is similarly limited and intended for use by service personnel, such as hotel staff. Enough with all that, on to safety. The fact that the EQE is based on all electric architecture opened up new design possibilities for Mercedes when it came to impact protection. It meant, for example, that a favourable location could be chosen for the installation of the battery in a crash protected area in the underbody. And because there's no large engine block on board in this EV, the car's behaviour in a frontal crash could be modelled even better. As well as the standard crash tests designed to examine the usual rigid passenger cell, special deformation zones and state-of-the-art restraint systems, the car's performance in various other impact situations was verified and extensive component tests carried out at the brand's Advanced Vehicle Safety Technology Centre in Sindelfingen. That allowed the EQE to score a top five star rating in Euro NCAP tests with occupant protection rated at 95% and 91% for adults and children respectively. This score also took into account the prodigious number of active safety systems dotted around the car to help predict and even avoid incidents. As you'd expect, every EQE is festooned with radars and cameras, many of which are controlled by systems concealed behind the large black panel at the front of the car. It's a bit disappointing though that you only get the very basics with entry level AMG line trim, things like autonomous braking, a lane keeping system and attention assist which provides alerts to prevent long journey fatigue. 
And of course, there are all the usual airbags and electronic assistance features for stability, braking and traction. What all EQEs should get as an absolute minimum though is the driving assistance package that at the time of our test was only fitted from mid-range AMG line premium trim upwards. The spec tariff here is far more like what you should expect from an £80,000 luxury EV with features like active blind spot assist to warn you if you're about to dangerously pull out with the vehicle in your blind spot. There's active emergency stop assist that'll stop the vehicle by itself if you're taken ill at the wheel and evasive steering assist helps with emergency turns in a panic manoeuvre. In addition, there's the brand's pre-safe plus and pre-safe impulse side packages that brace the cabin to better withstand an impact if a crash is deemed inevitable. These pre-safe features include a clever body raising function that'll help in side and rear collisions. If sensors think something's about to crash into the car, it will raise the side of the vehicle about to be impacted as high as its suspension allows to help protect occupants. Finally, as part of the driving assistance package, the autonomous braking and lane keeping systems are maximised and route based speed adjustment is included using GPS data to alter your car's speed for road conditions, slowing the car down before bends and junctions before returning to the set pace as part of the cruise control. If you're able to stretch to AMG line premium plus spec, exclusive luxury trim or one of the AMG 53 models, you'll get even more safety kit courtesy of the brand's top driving assistance package plus pack. With this, your EQE will be able to provide warnings of red lights, stop the signs, pedestrian crossings and no entry restrictions and will feature an upgraded traffic sign view system which can recognise signs and instructions on overhead gantries as well as conventionally posted speed limits. Active lane change assist will see the car automatically change lanes with just a nudge of the indicator. And in addition, the driving assistance package plus pack includes an emergency corridor function, along with an extended automatic restart function for motorways and functions to specifically protect you during turning, cornering and cross traffic maneuvers. There's also an exit warning function which will alert an occupant if their hands move towards the door handle when traffic is dangerously approaching from behind. Enough on conventional safety, let's finish with a few words on autonomous driving. Mercedes reckons it leads the field here, but it's difficult to know exactly which manufacturer does these days because legislation in the UK doesn't yet recognise so-called level three autonomous drive systems that enable the car to be set to drive itself completely independently for short periods while you turn your attention to other things. Like the EQS and the seventh generation S-Class, this EQE has been engineered for that and using the optional drive pilot setup available in this model's home market can do so on certain specially designated sections of German highway, though only at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour. Frustrated by the legislative limitations in offering this technology in other countries, Mercedes has done its best to make sure that this car has the best level two autonomous system. And you could argue that the active distance assist Distronic system you get, providing you avoid base trim, fits that description. It's designed to operate on a dual carriageway and works with an active steering assist setup which keeps you in the center of your designated lane and will, if needed, apply subtle steering correction to ease you back to where you should be. The Distronic feature is basically a super advanced adaptive cruise control that automatically regulates your distance to the car in front and can, if necessary, remotely slow the car with up to 50% of stopping power. It also works the included active speed limit assist feature that automatically sets the cruise control to speed limit signs as you pass them. It's usually the first question that comes up when talking about electric cars. How far will it go? 
And Mercedes has quite the argument for those that reckon EVs don't go far enough, as the EQE has one of the longest driving ranges on the market. Aided by a slippery shape and a large 89 kilowatt hour battery for mainstream models, the headline figure for the EQE is an official range of up to 388 miles. That's possible from the entry-level AMG line specification, whether either the EQE 300 and EQE 350 powertrains has both returned the same range regardless of trim. Varying specifications will affect that range because of trim changes such as larger wheels and alterations in styling. So the AMG line premium version is rated at 377 miles and the exclusive luxury derivative at 356. The plush AMG line premium plus model tested here with the EQE 350 powertrain will theoretically get you up to 349 miles. Other than the top AMG 53 variant, which sacrifices range for power and gets 290 miles from a charge of its slightly larger 90.6 kilowatt hour battery, the EQE we're trying here has the lowest range figure in the lineup but that's still towards the top end of what most rival manufacturers can achieve. At the time of filming, we didn't have precise EV range figures for the two models that will most closely compete with this Mercedes, the BMW i5 and the Audi A6 e-tron, but we expect the stats to be similar to those of the EQE. The direct rival you could choose at the time of this test, the Genesis G80 Electrified, which has a single powertrain option, tops out at 323 miles, though it has more power than a mainstream EQE and four driven wheels rather than two. Should you want to broaden your search to include pricier sports saloons of this size in this segment, then we'll tell you that Tesla's Model S covers up to 405 miles on a charge from its slightly larger 95 kilowatt hour battery. Mainstream four-wheel drive versions of the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron GT, though, can only achieve around 300 miles on a charge. But they, like the Genesis and Audi A6 e-tron models we just mentioned, have the advantage of being built around a more advanced 800-volt electrical architecture, rather than the 400-volt system of the EQE. That 800 volt system allows the electrons to flow faster, so battery recharging times are reduced, which is why the Porsche and the two Audis can recharge from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes, thanks to a maximum DC charging rate of 270 kilowatts. Tesla's own system is capable of charging at up to 250 kilowatts for similar top up times, and even the BMW i5's 400 volt system still achieves more than 200 kilowatts. The Genesis can charge at up to 350 kilowatts. In comparison, the EQE tops out at 170 kilowatts, which is 30 less than the EQS, but until quite recently would still have been seen as quite quick. Clearly now though, it's rather behind the curve. Even so, plug into a charger capable of delivering maximum power and a 10 to 80% charge will take a reasonable 31 minutes, adding more than 270 miles in the longest range EQE and over 240 in our test car. As standard, you get an 11 kilowatt AC onboard charger, though a future option will allow customers to pay extra for a more powerful 22 kilowatt unit. Using an AC charging point, the 11 kilowatt onboard charger tops up the car from 10 to 100% in eight and a half hours. If you use a 7.4 kilowatt wall box, you'll be looking at 14 and a half hours for a complete charge. And of course, there's a pre-entry climate control system so that you can pre-warm or pre-cool the cabin before you reach it while the car is still connected up. So you don't have to use energy from the ventilation fan once underway. If you're out and about and having to wait at a public charger, the center screen's apps menu could even provide a selection of games you can play to while away the time while you're connected up. When you're on the road in your EQE, you'll find it useful that the GPS mapping screen shows charging stations along your route with live information about the rate, how many charging points there are, and how many of them are available to use. If you're using the navigation system to reach your chosen charging point, the battery will be preheated or pre-cooled as you drive to the location for the most efficient charging visit possible. 
Mercedes claims to offer the world's biggest charging network, with those in the Mercedes Me network offset with green power. At the time of this test, in spring 2023, there were over 500,000 AC and DC charging points available to EQE owners across 31 countries, 200,000 of those in Europe. The situation in the UK, of course, is rather different. Charging station access is via either the Mercedes Me app or an RFID card you'll be issued with, or a Mercedes EQ vehicle head unit. And there's a year's free use of Ionity, unlimited rapid charging. You might wish to buy into a fixed price tariff to cover charging use. We'll quote prices for that current at the time of this test. Mercedes offers three fixed price tariff options. Tariff S is free of charge and for use by what the brand calls casual drivers, people who won't do a very high mileage. Tariff M is for regular drivers and costs $4.90 a month. And Tariff L is for frequent drivers and is free for the first year, then £10.90 a month thereafter. All of this car's charging functions are customizable via the Mercedes Me app or by using the charging section of the car's center screen EQ menu. Either way, you'll be able to customize the type of charging you want to do and decide when you want to do it, perhaps to take advantage of lower off-peak electricity tariff rates. We particularly like the center screen EQ section's clever choice of different charging programs, standard, home, and work, each of which allows you to preset things like departure time, maximum charge level, and air conditioning settings. If you don't have a home charging wall box, Obviously, you'll need to get one of those fitted. At the time of this test, Mercedes was offering a choice of two. A BP Pulse unit costing £999 or a Pod Point unit costing £875. Both those costs include installation. At the time of this test, purchasers were entitled to a £350 government OLES EVHS grant towards the cost. We mentioned the charging section of the EQ menu. Here, you'll also find a feature called Eco Charging, which drops your maximum charging rate from its peak of 170 kilowatts down to 100, while also maximizing your state of charge at around 80% every time you plug in. Both of these measures, if regularly used, will considerably prolong the life of the battery. There are two other parts to the EQ screen. There's a range menu that shows you what your current range is and what you can do to maximize it. For example, adjusting climate controls or turning on eco driving functions or eco driving modes. Finally, there's a consumption screen with graphic displays where you can keep an eye on how efficiently you've been driving over various periods of time. Beyond the EQ screens, there are other efficiency tools for you to use as well. The center screen's info section has an energy monitor, so you can see at any given time what's being powered by what. And both the instrument screen and the head-up display have an eco display to help you drive more economically. Also on the instrument screen is an energy consumption readout and a driving range option. In driving efficiently, it'll help enormously if you make proactive use of the car's clever energy recuperation system, which is manually selectable via the steering wheel paddles in three manual stages, D+, D and D-, all through a set and forget D auto setting if you can't decide. Our energy consumption figure on this test has been 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour, which in real world, well to wheel charging terms based on the energy cost of drawing from the national grid, means a CO2 equivalent contribution of 27.5 grams per kilometer. EVs like this may be environmentally friendly, but they're very far from being completely green. Maintenance visits will be once a year or every 15,500 miles, whichever comes first. Fixed price servicing is available across the EQE range and most customers opt for the Mercedes service care plan based either on a two service, two year deal, three years with three services or four years with four. Whatever package you opt for, it'll cover the cost of all recommended service items such as brake fluid, air filters and screen wash.
brake pads too, though you'll hardly ever have to replace those in an EQE thanks to the brake regeneration system. It's also worth mentioning that the standard Mercedes Me Connect Services package includes remote self-diagnostic capability, enabling your EQE to monitor wear and tear items and alert your local dealer to let you know if something needs seeing to. You'll get a message both on the dashboard and via your Mercedes Me app reminding you when a service is due. To ensure, it seems rather ridiculous that the EQE is rated the same as the far pricier EQS up in the highest, most expensive group of 50, no matter which version you pick. But this is also the case with rivals from Tesla, Genesis, Porsche and Audi. The insurance industry still terrified of EV powertrain replacement costs after a serious collision. The EQE, like all its electric rivals, is zero rated for VED car tax, though only until 2025, as is also the case when it comes to exemption from the London congestion charge. The current super low 2% benefit in kind taxation rate that currently applies to all EVs will only last until 2025 as well. Still, for the time being, that attractive tax rate means that a 40% taxpayer with an EQE 350 AMG Line Premium Plus model like this one would, at the time of filming in spring 2023, have an annual BIK bill of just £707. Companies benefit from 100% first-year capital allowances for EVs, and down the line, residual values for the model tested are rated at 48% after three years and 60,000 miles. Mercedes offers its standard three-year unlimited mileage warranty on the EQE, as with all the company's models, which is the same as that offered by BMW and Porsche, while Tesla offers a four-year warranty, though limited to 50,000 miles. Genesis is way ahead of Mercedes here. Its competing G80 electrified model supplied with a generous five-year care plan, which includes not only a five-year warranty, but also scheduled servicing for five years or 50,000 miles. You can extend the warranty on the EQE to five years at extra cost, and there's up to 30 years warranty against perforation due to corrosion. The brand also offers pan-European Mercedes-Benz roadside assistance, which is free for the first three years and automatically renewed for 12 months every time the car undergoes a full Mercedes-recommended service until the car is 30 years old. Like most EVs, the EQE's battery pack gets a separate warranty, in this case for 10 years or 155,000 miles, which is one of the longest on the market. Most rivals are for eight years or 100,000 miles. What else? Well, if you're interested in green issues, you'll want to know that Mercedes has kept the cobalt content in this car's batteries to just 10%, and that 80% of the steel used in its construction comes from scrap. All Mercedes-Benz factories around the world are CO2 neutral, and Mercedes offsets all charging carried out on its Mercedes Me charge network by ensuring that the equivalent amount of electricity used is fed into the grid from renewable sources, providing a green charging guarantee. As for the thorny issue of battery recycling, well, after the life of the cars come to an end, Mercedes-Benz Energy, a division of the brand, will be able to use the battery from a scrapped EQE in stationary energy storage systems connected to the national grid. All good to know. This car shows just how much Mercedes is prepared to invest in class leadership in the new segment for all electric large executive saloons. Some may struggle a little with the way that aerodynamics rather than character appear to have overly influenced the looks. But in terms of technology and sheer cabin wow factor, the EQE is undeniably class leading. It may lack its larger EQS stablemates headline making 450 mile range, but a 400 mile distance between charges isn't too far away in this only slightly smaller model if you choose the right specification. And the more compact battery is faster to charge too. Not as fast to charge as it perhaps ought to be though, 
we continue to be surprised by the brand's decision not to build an ultra rapid charging 800 volt electrical architecture into the EVA2 platform developed for this car and the other big Mercedes EVs it shares showroom space with. Rivals like Genesis, Audi and Porsche have all stolen a march on the three-pointed star here. That won't harm the EQE much in the short term though, and right here, right now, it feels appropriately futuristic, which of course is essential, because if it wasn't, Mercedes brand loyalists would otherwise probably choose a plug-in hybrid E-Class instead. Choose an EQE though, then live with it for a bit, and you might find yourself wondering why that combustion-engined E-Class equivalent model is still on sale. Once there's price parity between the two cars, which may not be as far off as many think, there's little doubt which of the two cars most prospective customers will choose. The future's arrived, but are you ready for it? <laughs>